Hi, everyone. Welcome to IUSA Unpacked. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to Erin Hernandez Reisner. Erin was one of our Imaging USA speakers, right, who has volunteered her time today to come back and answer your questions after her amazing program. Erin, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you coming back and helping us out. Um, your program, Connection Through Content Creation, um, was highly attended. I, I, I know because we have pictures. <laughs> Um, and how was it? How was how was your time? How was your time at Imaging? It was wonderful. I think that. <clears throat> so I love Imaging because everything feels kind of like a family. Like once you go and you make friends and you just continue to go, not only are we learning, but we're developing these really integral friendships that can carry us through good times, bad times whatever it is. And so I think that every year people come and need that definitely after COVID for all that camaraderie. And I think we're also hungry for the education. Yeah, absolutely. You guys, Erin, Erin um, has been helping us out in the education department for quite a while. Um, and I, I would introduce her as a friend uh, because she's been just a, a, just, we have a wonderful relationship and I appreciate that so much. But I would ask you this, Erin, how how would you, how do you introduce yourself to people? Okay, so that's actually a great question because it rolls into content creation. Because, okay, so it's 50 to 80% of ourselves online. We have to, we have to put ourselves into it. It can't just be pretty pictures of other people. People have to see us. And so every time you're posting about yourself, you're kind of introing yourself. You are sharing who you are with the world or what is important to you or how you serve other people, how you help, your dreams, your aspirations, all of those are introductions. And there was something that I learned early on about introductions. When I was first starting in photography, I, I would say that I was naturally very blessed and talented. However, and I did work really hard. However, I feel like all of my years as being a performer and growing up in theater led to me being able to photograph well, because directing and choreography is very similar to posing and, and directing people in a photograph. And the sets and the way I would see an environment is very similar to the stage. And so... When I first started, I won some awards right away. I was published immediately. And what happened is, is that I started, and this is my mistake, I started introing myself with everyone that I met. Like, yes, I'm this award-winning photographer and I'm doing this and I'm doing that because I wanted to belong so bad. Like I deserve to be yeah. here too, because yeah. I saw all these people as up here. And I felt like I was down here and I felt like, okay, so these things, like maybe they'll value me and it did not work. In fact, it backfired. It makes you unlikable. Like people are like, who is this person showing off? Like, and I didn't mean it in that way, but I, but I mess up. And so now when I start thinking of introing myself at some point, that's your lower third, but also who are we as people and why do we do what we do? And yeah. who we are and why we want to be photographing people should be some of that introduction. I want to be able to connect with other people. I want yeah. other people to be able to do things through their trauma, past their hard things in their life, that you can do magnificent things no matter what you're going through and no matter what hard times you've ever been through. And I think that that would be more of my intro would be that I hope that I can inspire and help people because motivate's a hard word. I don't always like motivate because yeah. I don't want to push yeah. someone into doing something they're not ready to do or they don't want to do. Right. But I do hope they get motivated from the inspiration, you know, to do what they want to do. Yeah. I, I love that. I, want to just <laughs> I, I do. I want to just real quick appreciate the fact that um, uh, one of the words I would use for you is, uh, is transparent. Um, you're very transparent and you're very um, sensitive and sincere. 
and I appreciate you can share with us what didn't work, you know, and the mistakes that, that you've made, um, because I think that's how people learn. I feel like we learn from other people's mistakes, right? And so thank you for just being honest about that. And and so today, like if we were sitting here today and I just met you for the very first time, and um, how would you, tell me, what, what does that sound like for you to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Angela, and you are? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Erin Hernandez Reisner. I'm, um, I like to be a heartfelt leader and I'm a photographic artist that travels the world photographing and creating content and hoping to inspire other people. I love that. I love that. Thank you. That is, that is so good. And that is a big, I mean, that, yeah, that, that absolutely encompasses you and encompasses your heart. Um, and that leaves a lot of room for digging in and learning more about you. Um, can you, so so here's, uh, and I wanna jump in a little bit because we do have people on here and I do wanna just remind everyone, please go in and ask questions. I'm monitoring the questions here. Um, so we'll say hi, hi Andy, hi Cheryl, looks like you're staying on, hi Ken, hi Lauren, hi Mary Vance. Hi, Mick. Good to see you guys. Hi, Robert, Rich, uh, Rich Robin, Stephen. Yeah, lots of people on here today. Please go in and ask questions. That's what we want. Um, that's what we're wanting uh, to do for you guys today is, uh, you know, after imaging, the whole point of this is that you go home, you've learned so much at Imaging USA, and then we come back. We have these amazing instructors who come in and then can answer your questions as you try to put this information to work for you in your business, because that's how we want to support and help you. So please feel free. I'll be monitoring the um, the questions as we're going. But um, as we get started, one of one of the first questions uh, I have um, for Aaron is just like, what what are, if, if I were a content creator and you were giving me advice, right? And I'm just getting started in the business and, or maybe uh, I just, I'm just newer, right? So what would be your, your biggest pieces of advice for getting started as a content creator? And, and who should be a content creator? Maybe that's a good question to start with too. So I think that everyone should be a content creator. I technically think that content creation is the new marketing. And if you're not marketing, you're not getting new clients and you need to do that. And the easiest way to do that is through content creation. Content creation is a $280 billion industry. And we are photographers and we have a service to sell. So there might be other ways of creating streams of income through content creation, but you have something to already sell. So we should immediately be out creating content. Now, that being said, <laughs> the other piece of advice I would say is that if you're going through something and you're insecure and you're struggling with putting yourself out there, you like I had been, you can also 100% do content creation for other companies and other people. And that stuff goes, you create it, it goes out on their walls, it goes out through their email marketing or wherever it is that they wanna put it, it's theirs. So it doesn't necessarily go on your wall and I think, or on your feed. And I think that that's what's really cool about content creation is that it's not always about us. And it's not always us putting ourselves out there, even though, Right now in my journey, I'm trying hard to do that. And that's going to be that next step. And I want everyone to join me in doing that because I know it's scary because I'm terrified of it. And I'm going to do it brave. We have to do it brave. And I'm going to put myself out there. And if I make mistakes, at least I'm going to learn from them because everyone's afraid of that. The feedback that you receive. In all honesty, if we sat down and we thought about it as a positive thing and we weren't afraid, I think the more the positive stuff is what's going to come and what we notice. And that's what we need to hyper focus on, especially just the way the Internet works. I love I love the do it brave. That's awesome. <laughs> need a little Aaron sticker. Um, so we are having questions coming in, Erin. So I just wanted to to jump on here. Lauren wants to know um, what would be your first step in developing a social media strategy for a photography business? Okay. So 
um, can I ask a question and her, can she respond? Okay, what specific, I would like to go into an example. So what specific photography business, what niche are you wanting to do? And it's okay if you niche your clients, that's fine. Or if you have a very specific niche, but I'd like to get specific in the response. So she says, she says weddings. Weddings, okay, perfect. So what you're, now my next question is, are you destination wedding photographer or are you photographing your weddings locally? Uh, it looks like local. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to start doing is building your network. And people don't think of building networks when they think of content creation, but you absolutely need to. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to find some, and you may already have these friends. So if you already have them, then you guys are going to create like a little unit and work together. And your images are going to also help them. So find a couple of florists. I had three florists that I like to work with a lot when we have our studio in Kansas City. I went and made really good relationships with two bridal salons. One went out of business and then I became very, very active with one bridal salon to the point where I would print out when I knew that an, an expensive gown was purchased by one of my brides, I would print them a canvas and take it to them as a gift to hang in their studio, in their, um, and we would change out the art for them. They would put it at their salon. They would often hang them in the changing rooms. Like anywhere that I could be seen, I got seen. So that I created content then for that bridal salon. Then when you do things online, you guys need to share and go live with them. Go live online and ask them questions. Be like, what are the top styles that you're finding? And if you also know your target bride and or even couple and who they are, you're like if they're sports people, follow the sports teams that they follow all within your area and your community. So everything you can think of. Um, if there are local boutiques that they shop at, you're going to want to team up with those boutiques, offer to do a session with that boutique. Now, don't think of it as in like, I'm giving them free stuff. Think of it as in like, I am building a really good relationship and I'm going to give you this, you're going to give me this. So there's always an exchange rate. And then you're going to be able to display things in their store, ask, and be like every time in the bridal salon, oh, I lost myself. Can you guys still see me? No, I think we, we lost you there. Oh no, hold on. I was on a roll too. I know, it's, it's an exchange. I, I'm, I'm gonna keep us there. A little pin in that, because it's okay, so good. Okay, there we go. Back. <laughs> so like, you know, the bridal salons, when they do a dress or something or someone comes, they will do a little uh, goodie bag. And so I would always drop off stuff or have like a special offer inside those goodie bags. And so all of these are content creation that's networking. And also, I know that some people have a love-hate relationship with styled shoots, but guys, they really help. They help a lot. They help brides know. It's not just even seeing or being inspired, which does do that. But what it does is it allows them to know, oh, these eight vendors work well together. These three people work really well together. It allows them to subconsciously go, I can trust all these people. And the more you put that out there, the faster your business actually grows. So I hope that helps also translate all that stuff online and write articles to your target bride and put them on LinkedIn and put them on social media and blog. I know that people don't like blogging, but right now, um, and I don't want you to use this entirely, but chat GPT, the paid version is actually pretty decent. And if you, I don't personally do this because I'm a writer, but if you're not a writer, this will help so much. Go in there with chat GPT and then because you don't want to steal anything, you need to run it through Grammarly. And then Grammarly is going to tell you where things are full quotes, where it looks like it's stolen. And what you need to do is a couple of things. You either need to change that to where it's not plagiarizing or contact the company and see if you can send them a link and cite them as a source. Now you're also building another relationship. So there are credible ways to use this and to build. But that's what I would do. And I would definitely be running 
I'd be running a blog. Yeah. And ChatGPT can also just be a great resource for idea creation, right? Ideation. Yes. So if you're like, I'm a photographer in this area and this um, florist, what should, what are some ideas as to what we can create? And you can even set it a budget and that are, that is like, that will cost the florist less than $150, you know, nice. cause we have to realize yeah. that some stuff doesn't cost us stuff, but our florist, like that's yeah. cost on their end. And so to value these relationships, I hope that helps. If you have any yeah. other questions, like hit me up because I like I this feel like that's a very active thing. And the other thing is, yeah, you have to do the work. Like you have to do the things, <laughs> right? It's, I feel like marketing nowadays, it's very active. It's a very active, very out there, very personal, very face-to-face -face relationship building. So much is done online, but you know, I think those relationships we build face-to-face -face is, um, you know, those are, are just really, really strong. Uh, well, Tracy has a, a question slash statement, I think. Um, and if you have, do you have something you wanted to say, Erin? I don't mean to cut you off. Oh no, you're good. We can come back to it. Okay. Uh, so Tracy says, as a photographer, I've always put myself behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, I, it, and I see it's better to introduce yourself as a photographer on social media. What do people or potential clients want to see? That's okay. a good question because I feel like some content is like photographers for other photographers yeah. and then there's photographers for clients, right? Well, and if you notice that every recommendation I gave her had to do with helping her target client. Yes. And yes. it did not have anything to do with photography. However, I do think that behind the scenes of you in action helps our clients because I think they like to see that behind the scenes thing. It's really, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's interesting to them, to everybody. Yeah. And it gets more views. Um, yeah. But what was your question? Again? How interesting our jobs are sometimes. <laughs> I know. Tell me your question again. Um, so she was, uh, uh, she was just wondering, um, what do potential clients want to see, right? And I think there's also maybe a little trepidation about getting in front of the camera. So maybe let's speak a little mm -hmm. bit to how do you get started in front of the camera? How do you get started being the person who is is in front of the camera sharing mm -hmm. information? So first off everything that is that you are insecure about yourself is going to come out i don't know why but it does and i know that people look at me and they're like you're so beautiful i get that i i will own it i will take it i will take every compliment but that does not change the fact that i am overweight and i do not like my body and i have massive body image issues and i do not like the way i look when my picture is taken. Mm -hmm. I used to be an extreme athlete when I was younger and I and I was used to that body. I mean, I was training for the Olympics and I got pregnant with my son and then ended up on bed rest and gained over a hundred pounds. I was so sick and mm -hmm. had an emergency C-section and I totally like lost my body. And within five years, I had all these surgeries um, that and and anybody that's been through like female reproductive stuff understands that like your hormones shift the weight happens and then your muscle memory holds that and it's just so I'm hard on myself and so I had to overcome that and just be like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's the it's not I don't even think other people see me that way it's just the way I see myself and that's not the image that God wants for me, like, I'm just going to say it like, I, so I need to be confident and secure and fake it, I guess. <laughs> do it brave. Yeah, do it brave. You got to do it brave. In front of the I camera. And I think I we're also afraid of the criticism and we're afraid of our own opinions and our own thoughts because of cancel culture. And I know that because I've gone through all of that. I'm like, I, what if I say the wrong thing? And it's like, you know what? You will survive. If yeah. you say the yeah. wrong thing, you will survive. And yeah. you have to trust the trust yourself and trust and know that you are a good person. You don't have to constantly tell everybody you're a good person. You just have to be a good person. And go out there and just just stand in front of it and and maybe even set up a camera off to the side. Like even your even your cell phone, set it off to the side and film yourself photographing something or someone. 
and yeah. start with that yeah. instead of necessarily talking to the camera. If you're insecure with that, start setting up a behind the scenes. Mm. And then I think it's easier. It's easier to get started and you'll start. We never get confident until we do. So confidence does not come until we are successful. What happens is, is people have an inflated ego to overcompensate their lack of confidence. So you don't need the ego to be inflated. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to have anxiety. Take a deep breath, do it brave, do it anyway. And then when you realize, hey, this is working, you'll start feeling successful and then it gets easier. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise it never gets easier. You just yeah. have to do it and, and I, then I, know it's better. And, and everybody has something to share. Like that's what I believe. I believe every single person has something to share. And so, yeah, be you, be, be whoever wonderfully made person is you, right? So there um, are a few things about um, content creation and uh, social media that I actually want to share. Yes, Especially please. Especially before we walk in on this, um, what's going to be a big political year. And so here's something to understand. The algorithm does not judge right or wrong, good or bad. The algorithm judges what you interact with. So if you are upset by a post and you participate, it is going to show you more things that are going to upset you because you are participating. So my advice is when you are triggered by something, when you are, when something upsets you, do not respond, let it go, and then respond on other things that make you happy, that bring you joy, that you can support. Because what you comment on, the algorithm will show you more of. So when you are trying to run a business, let's say a wedding photography business in a small town, you want to be commenting and interacting with everything from that small town to all the business owners. And then you also want to be contacting and communicating with all of the people that are also within that town and all things wedding. If you start watching cake making, it's going to think you make cakes. If you, whatever it is you interact with and you watch, it thinks that's what you are. Huh. So then it tries to show your page to similar things. So I have other pages, I call them theme pages. So I have other pages. One is all about fitness and health. Another one is all about food. Another one is all about motivation. And all of these things are, another one is about books. And all of these things are things I'm personally interested in. And then when I want to view those things, I go to those pages. What you can do then is if you like certain things, you can just reshare them onto that page. And it's just a theme page. But that way, your page, like your personal brand or your photography business is focused on the photography business and the clients that page wants to serve and that's and how you actually all, curate that algorithm all entwined with everything else mm -hmm. so like if you're um, a harry robin, potter fan you need a harry potter page <laughs> robin says omg that is genius <laughs> thank you <laughs> um I am going to try to, uh, I've, I've asked for clarification on this question. Um, how can you use that understanding when you were talking about um, body image, um, like with your clients, like how can you use that, that understanding about body image with your clients? And Is it can, because the clients are insecure about their own bodies too? I'm going to wait for him to reply. Yes. Yes. Okay. And my camera went away. I don't know what's happening. I think we just have really good energy today. <laughs> Hold on. I'm coming back, I promise. Perfect. Don't go These away. Questions are yeah. really good. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to be real honest with this one in that the answer is very hard 
that's a hard that's hard to answer i wish that i was an expert in making people love themselves and their bodies even while i'm photographing them i don't know if that's exactly what i don't know if i'm an expert enough in that area to actually respond to that question i think that one of the things that i've been doing a lot which i can share that is that i photograph people privately that is mainly my demographic of people is private my clients are not looking to be photoshopped they're not looking to be anything they want to be accepted for who they are they like that i also think that that's why film photography is so popular because people feel like the film is not being edited mm. i think there's a truth to this a little bit and they're okay with who they are but they don't want the whole world or the internet seeing themselves and i think that this trend is going to be on the rise i think that what i've been doing for the past five or six years is going to be something that we see a lot of people do because privacy is very hard to get <clears throat> and i think that that's also why styled shoots are going to be more popular that being able to work with people that you can share online is something <clears throat> I think that a lot of people don't want the internet to judge them or for instance, like we're really protective of our children. I don't want a lot of images online of my daughter. It's not gonna happen. And so I know my clients feel the same way. And so if I were getting pictures taken of myself and I knew it was gonna be private, I would be more comfortable with that. Um, but i do think that there's a place for zapping people in and adjusting that and all of that and i think that that's a conversation that we have with clients prior to and then that adjustment happens but i think that it has to do with establishing the trust to begin with because if you show yourself as an expert with making people look and feel beautiful then they should come to you with confidence but their insecurities are their insecurities. And sometimes their insecurities are not actually our responsibility. And we're taking it on as the photographer because we want them to feel something that may, they may never feel. Mm -hmm. And I've had beautiful, beautiful women do private boudoir with me and hate the photographs, but they do it for like a significant other that's in the military or for a partner, you know, and, and they love it but they have it and, and there is no fixing that. And that's why I think the message with boudoir now is like, love yourself, be yeah. it's yeah. affecting, it's healing. But some of this is therapy and it's not, and we're not therapists, even though yeah. it feels like it sometimes. That's my best answer. And I bet somebody has a way awesomer one. <laughs> that is a great answer. And just your response, um, uh, Ken says, thank you. It says, as a guy, it makes it even harder sometimes to talk to women about these things, right? And I would so, agree. I don't think you can. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I wonder if you, I, I think you can. I think, I think it's just a little bit different conversation, you know? And I think we all have to lean into our own personal experience. And also we have to lean into empathy and mm -hmm. good listening, right? Um, and also listening, you know, I I don't know, like when I, I'm gonna go off on a tangent and I'm not gonna do that to you. So we'll talk about that other point that I was just gonna make. In just you did talk about <laughs> empathy and I was like, you know, really good leaders have to have empathy. Yeah. And, and yeah. so, you know, we have to lead with that, but it can't only be that you have to also right. like have that take charge too, but it takes yeah. both. Cause if you take yeah. charge too much and you don't have empathy, it doesn't work. Yeah. And if you're all empathy, but you don't have the charge, it doesn't work either. So it <laughs> takes the balance of the two things. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love that. That is so true. Um, so I know our time is running, we're running, or we're running close. So if you could give people an advice today to take home, put in their pocket, go do this thing, what would be your one piece of advice today to all the people listening? Okay. So when it comes to content creation, I want you guys to think about what it is you want to do and who you're helping. And I want you to write those things down. And then I want you to brainstorm a hundred, I know it sounds like a lot, but once it gets going, you'll go and obviously don't have to be perfect, but a hundred things that you can do 
to make those things connect. And so like, I'm gonna connect with a bridal salon. I'm gonna connect with a florist. I'm gonna connect with um, three restaurants that support my team's sports teams that all of the grooms like. And then you're just gonna build relationships with these people because that you wanna dominate your city and be the best in your town and your place, then dominate it. Serve that city. I kinda wanna just be like, mic drop <laughs> that do that <laughs> that's so great Erin you are such a giver of great information you are such a sharer of your heart in such an amazing way you are sincerely authentic and I appreciate your transparency and your own willingness to share all of you in such a such an open way Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you on the stage at Imaging USA. We appreciate you now here at IUSA Impact, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us today. Thank you so much.